All right, today we're going to look at a uh, friction and acceleration problem with the classic uh, idea of pulling a tablecloth out from underneath some sort of table settings. So in this particular problem, what we're going to do is we're going to have a glass that's you know full of water or something like that, and then it's sitting on top of a tablecloth. Friction is very important in this particular problem. You can imagine that if I started very slowly pulling on this tablecloth, then there's some friction associated with this region here and that friction would be able to start accelerating this particular glass and it would start to move along with the tablecloth. If the amount of friction that's happening here is not sufficient in order to have this acceleration be equal to this acceleration then there will be a slippage here and that slippage would be what you are actually looking for in this situation where you would have, aha, I was able to pull the tablecloth out. So what I'm asking for us to solve in this problem is I want to know what is the actual minimum acceleration that you would be able to use and have this intentionally slip. I want it to slip. We're going to use our information that we know about static friction here. So this is a static friction situation. In that spot right there, there is no motion between the glass and the tablecloth. So even though the tablecloth is moving, there's no motion between the two objects. So that is static friction. really cluttering up that drawing so let's reclaim it a little bit here so that it's not so messy looking what we have again is if I'm gonna pull it this way then I am looking for the friction and I'm really specifically interested in the maximum possible friction that I can get because the maximum friction is going to be related to the minimum acceleration remember if I have even more acceleration down here at the tablecloth then it's going to slip. So if I go over here and just write the equation for static friction, you recall it looks something like this, where we have the maximum static friction will be the equals part of this sign here, and it's going to be the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. Which, what's interesting about this problem is I have not told us anything about the mass of this particular glass. So there is a weight for this glass, Fg is equal to Mg, but I don't know the mass. I do, however, know that the Fn that's pointing up must be equal and opposite, so equal in magnitude but opposite in direction to the Fg. I know gravity. I know that, assuming we're on Earth, this is going to be my negative 9.8 number. So I'm going to let the direction be clarified by the downward pointing arrow. I know that Fg is going to be equal to a downward 9.8 m. And the Fn is going to be equal to a positive variety of 9.8 m. Again, my vectors are showing the direction there. So coming back over here to this equation, I just told us something about the Fn. And I also said that for maximum friction, we are e interested in the equals part of the less than or equal to. So the friction, the static friction, is going to be equal to the coefficient of static friction, which was given in the problem, 0 0.63 unitless number, multiplied by 9.8 that's actually meters per second squared times m. Then what I can do is I can actually start picking up some information here about Newton's laws. I know that F net is equal to two things. It's one equal to the sum of all the forces. And if I come up and look at my forces here, right now I can't put a number on Fg and I can't put a number on F in because I don't know the mass. However, I know those two things are going to cancel each other. So the Fg cancels the Fn. Then I'm going to be left with only this friction that is uh, pointing to the left as I'm drawing this thing out here. So I have that my F net was Fg plus Fn, but luckily those two things are canceling. And then I'm going to have plus my friction. 
So there's one piece of information. F net is equal to the friction. I also have that Newton's second law tells me F net is equal to mass times acceleration. Acceleration is what I'm interested in finding. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set these two equations equal to each other through F net. So I have mass times acceleration from this part down here is equal to, and now I just need to write in what I know about the friction. It is 0 0.63 multiplied by 9.8 multiplied by m. You should notice that I have m on both sides of the equation. That is crucial for this type of problem. To notice that it doesn't actually matter what the mass is, it's going to cancel out. So now I'm left with this relatively simple and straightforward idea that the acceleration is simply equal to 0.63 times 9.8. Therefore, my acceleration is 6.174. That's in meters per second squared because this number actually carried the units of meters per second squared as well. So that is my final answer. So again, just to make sure everyone understands, if I were to pull that tablecloth and give it an acceleration of 6.179 or 4, that is the number that this friction could still keep up with. But if I actually pulled with more acceleration, I would not have more force available to me in order to accelerate the glass at that same acceleration. And so that's the limit right there. So there is my minimum acceleration. If that made sense, let your computer know.